It's been a bad night for Boris Johnson. Overnight, the Tories lost two critical by-elections in the West Yorkshire seat of Wakefield and Tiverton and Honiton in Devon. These results are a brutal blow to the Prime Minister. Labour regained Wakefield, a red wall seat, with a 12% swing from the Tories, and the Lib Dems overturned a massive 24,000 vote majority in Tiverton and Honiton, which is part of the Conservative so-called Blue Wall in the south of England. Now, these results are terrible for the Tories on several levels. Not since 1991 has a sitting Prime Minister lost two by-elections in a single day. But these two seats are also emblematic of the challenge that Boris Johnson faces at the next election. North and South, Red Wall and Blue Wall, this is the electoral coalition that Boris Johnson managed to stitch together in 2019 by promising to get Brexit done. Now it's clear that this coalition is fraying, with anger directed squarely at Prime Minister over party gate, cost of living and the atmosphere of lies and sleaze pervading the government. The Prime Minister is currently in Rwanda for the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, a diplomatic summit where he is meeting senior figures from across the Commonwealth and Prince Charles as well as other royals. Now this was an attempt for him to get on the front foot and to focus on diplomacy after months of sleaze and scandal at home. But this morning, he was going for a morning dip when he got a phone call he wasn't expecting. Tory chairman Oliver Dowden said he was resigning and that he was going to publish his letter shortly afterwards at about 5.30am UK time. And this wasn't part of the plan. The Conservatives knew that they were going to do badly in the elections, though perhaps not as badly as they did. Oliver Dowden resigning was not something that had been expected. Loyalist cabinet ministers had to be scrambled to defend the Prime Minister on the airwaves, which Mr Dowden had been scheduled to do until about an hour beforehand. Dowden was also a key supporter of Boris Johnson in 2019. He was one of several ministers credited with winning over large swathes of the Parliamentary Party to back Boris Johnson, including Rishi Sunak and the former cabinet minister Robert Jenrick. Now, Dowden also makes clear in his letter that he's not happy. He said, we can't carry on with business as usual, somebody must take responsibility, in a not so coded swipe at the Prime Minister, who we all know rarely takes responsibility for anything. Now his departure turns the spotlight squarely back onto Boris Johnson's leadership. Boris Johnson only survived a confidence vote a couple of weeks ago and 41% of his MPs made it clear that they weren't happy with him. But he'd been hoping to put that behind him by turning his attention to policy areas, to diplomacy, to other matters and to try and shift away from Partygate and other personal scandals. But the questions keep on coming. He's safe from a confidence vote for a year under the Tory rule book, but that doesn't matter if senior MPs decide they've had enough. Now, one of the reasons the Cabinet and MPs who are unhappy with his leadership decided not to oust him in the recent confidence vote is because they think that he's still an election winner. He won a massive majority in 2019, and I think some MPs have been waiting to see whether he could still be counted on to deliver such a mandate again. But if he isn't an electoral asset, then his position becomes pretty shaky. Now, these results show that the Prime Minister can't always be counted on now to win elections, and that's going to be making Conservative MPs nervous. The Prime Minister has a very remarkable ability to shake off political disasters, things that would have brought down other leaders. But at some point, Conservatives are going to have to make a judgment over whether this slippery Prime Minister has finally run out of road.